Okay, why aren't we? Let's see, should we? Okay, we are still loading a number of people here, so we'll get started in one second. Thank you. And we are recording now. Yes. Okay, we'll wait another 30 seconds here and then we'll get started. Let me log in so far. 49. Nice. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining the CTI Connect in Toronto for part one of our four-part Wireside Chat series, The Road to Wispalooza. We're very excited to kick off this series with Toronto. In part one of the series, we'll have a general overview of the Toronto G1 NGFWA platform. This is a 30,000-foot view of the products and their capabilities. There's so much to learn about, the, about Toronto and their amazing game-changing technology that we will go into more detail on specific areas in the later parts of the series. Part two is another Wireside chat on September 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern, where we will discuss network planning in thorough detail. Parts three and four, ROI and scalability, will be held at Wispalooza's Master Monday on October 3rd in the Paris Hotel, Las Vegas. Parts three and four are a portion <clears throat> of an all-day event when we will take a deep dive into the secret sauce that makes Toronto G1 a true next-generation platform. More details on this event will be sent in the coming days. Don't forget to stop by our booths, 145 CTI and 149 Toronto at Wispalooza. Please use the Q&A section for any questions during the webinar and we'll answer them upon completion. Joining us today from Toronto, we have Kyle Friedis, Distribution Channel Manager and Varden Amiri, Senior Sales Engineer with Toronto. Thank you both for taking the time to speak with us today. I'll pass the screen to you for the presentation. Well, thanks a lot, Mike, and welcome everybody for those that join, we appreciate your time. I know you have a busy schedule and uh, we will gladly answer as many questions as we can towards the end of the presentation. Here's some of the subjects that we're going to cover today. Interference, line of sight, near line of sight, non-line of sight. And then how does Toronto address these challenges uh, with uh, technology that we have with multi-path beam forming and ABIC that we'll discuss later. We'll talk about the product overview, like Mike said, and then uh, we'll just talk specifics about what it takes to get started as well. So um, really excited to have you here and join us and hopefully you can join us for the follow on sessions as well. Okay, first off, Toronto has developed new technology, new chips that are not 3GPP. So we're not limited by the uh, current technology that you hold in your hand with your phone. Uh, because of that, we're able to have higher performance and better link speeds and the technology is more suited for fixed wireless. So as Mike said earlier, we are a true next generation fixed wireless solution. Our products are point to multi-point. So we're providing connections from towers, high structures like water tanks or high buildings that are connected to remote nodes or CPEs out of the customer side. It could be a home, a multi-tenant unit, a business. And because of that, uh, we're able to connect a lot of customers with these remote nodes to the base station. So we'll talk a lot about the uh, technology as we go through that, uh, through the presentation, but here's some of the key points uh, that we'll discuss throughout the discussion. All right, moving on. 
So some of the key technologies uh, that we provide uh, allows for two critical things, fiber quality performance and then economics that makes sense for customers to transition to this technology. So the first is we spent 12 years uh, developing our products with an uh, incredible engineering effort. And so we've been around for 12 years, but we've only launched into the market for about a year now. So we consider ourselves a one-year startup. Uh, we didn't take a lot of the existing technology of Wi-Fi and 3G PP uh, and implement it in our product. Instead, we built our own chipsets and our own technology around that uh, RF capability and the digital uh, piece of the radios as well. And so we weren't inhibited or encumbered by those existing technologies. The other part of it is we have an evolution of the products and now we've arrived at a production product that can be scaled in mass for customers. And we're seeing that uh, evolve with customers in the field right now. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Some of the key breakthrough technologies is we've seen an order of magnitude of performance improvements in uh, delivering higher bandwidth, longer ranges, high interference environments. And that's really a key part of what we've delivered to the industry and to the market. So we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about uh, just the, the underlying technology that goes with it. Toronto radios, okay, let's talk specifics. We can't penetrate through physical objects such as mountains or buildings or tree trunks, but the radios can adjust for these obstructions that are in the path between the two, the base nodes and the remote nodes. We can adjust for other radios transmitting in the same frequency in the same path for linear interference or transmitting on another tower or some other facility nearby or in the area. So we can address all those uh, interference issues. We can also address for our own transmissions that we have emanating off of our towers. So the benefit of that is we can operate a lot of Toronto radios close proximity, as well as other products operating the same frequency. We're not affected by rain, snow, or sleet, so we don't have those environmental impacts. Okay, just a quick primer. As you can see on the right-hand side, the top uh, example is uh, line of sight, clear line of sight. There's no obstructions in the Fresnel zone. Uh, there's no moving targets, uh, buses, trucks, what have you. And there's no trees or buildings or any kind of structures in between. So clear line of sight. Really easy to support and easy to do for most um, wireless providers. The near line of sight is the middle one. So there's some obstruction in the Fresnel zone that's not completely blocking the beam, but it does impact the performance of the transmission between those two radios. The last one is a true non-line of sight problem where you have an obstruction that you cannot clearly see between one radio and the other radio. There's not a clear line of sight at all. And there's obstructions that uh, prohibit a, a direct connection between those radios. Toronto can provide great support and service and you know, performance of the radios uh, in all three conditions. And we'll talk about that in more detail. Okay, so I'd like to introduce Martin and he's gonna talk about leveraging multipath. Sure. So, um... Thank you everyone for joining. So, you know, one of the true benefits of our G1 solution in non line of sight type environments is the equipment, which is based on the solution, which is based on distributed massive MIMO. We can take advantage of the multi path signals. So, there's, there's a, there's, you know, a couple of examples that we have, um, you know, on the screen where you have an obstruction in the middle where we can actually look at a diffraction or a reflection of the signal. So, you know, the remote side is an eight by eight radio and the BN is a 16 by 16. So therefore uh, we can go ahead and look at, you know, any type of signal that reaches the RN and we can go ahead and reconstruct the signal, um, you know, on the, on, on the far end of the link. Now our links are symmetrical. So, um, you know, regardless of whether it's the downlink or the uplink, um, the signal will get recreated and the, both units will go ahead and converge on a path that will give you the best capacity possible. So thus, you know, being able to operate in these type of environments. 
um, beamforming adaptation. So it indicates that you know you're operating in an environment where you have moving obstruction, right? So let's say you have a non-line of sight, you know, type of link. You have a bus that drives through the area or, or whatever, where you start seeing some some fading. We can basically uh, beamform and capture that beamform signal and adjust for it on the receive side. Receive side could be RN or BN. Remember, we're distributed massive MIMO and adjust for the you know best or most optimal link to deliver the highest capacity over that given link. So we, it, it, the, the obstruction basically um, does not affect the link quality. There we go. So here's a typical example that you would see in the long line of sight capabilities where you know a lot of the challenge is that when, when you operate in such a high dense you know suburban environment, is that you have trees uh, that are in the way, the RNs or the BNs, you know, they're at a specific height, for example, on top of a one-story or two-story home, and you have to go through trees. In addition to going through trees, um, you know, you have some obstructions, which are other homes, and you have trucks or buses that come through the path. Uh, you know, working in line of sight is very easy. Working in an environment like this becomes uh, very challenging. So we can go ahead and reconstruct the signal in environments where it's deep fades and again deliver the high capacity link that Tarana delivers. So if we <clears throat> look at it a little bit closer, here, here's a multi-path type environment. This is how the signal will look like. So in other solutions, you will actually see the, the graph, the peaks and valleys of the signal fluctuating or what we call deep fades. In environments where you know the channel is changing, you know, uh, very rapidly, and that's due to the case of you know wind, tree branches, buses, trucks moving along the path. In in our case, with our with our you know beamform type signal that we can uh, beamform towards you know the opposite direction and use the best path at five thousand times a second, we can do a better job of reconstructing that signal and achieving what you see the black straight line on the top, which is a reliable link uh, and giving you higher capacity because it gives you a 30 dB improvement over your traditional type, you know, a fixed wireless access solution. And those could be your, you know, Wi-Fi type based or your 3GPP type solutions. So when, when we talk about deploying, you know, Tarana, um, we, we don't talk about deploying in a, you know, scenario where, you know, here's your line of sight link and I could do, you know, X amount of capacity. We built the product based on the challenges that you have when you deploy a wireless solution. You don't just have line of sight links. You don't just have near line of sight links. Uh, you have also non-line of sight links. So you have all those conditions in addition to, you know, deep fades that occur and interference depending on the spectrum that you use. Tarana built its own chipsets to address a lot of this. As you can see from the curve, you know, as you get further and further away from, from, from the uh, transmitter, what happens is that you know, the percentage or the probability of, of, of uh, customers or, or residential homes you know, tend to be now more the non-line of sight. So going from line of sight towards near line of sight. And as you hit roughly about you know, the, the uh, thousand meter or, or, or one kilometer range, you'll see that, you know, the probability of line of sight is, is, is you know, below 5%. So we built a product to be able to address, you know, an actual deployment and not what you would see in an ideal condition, you know, where there's no interference, line of sight, and so on and so forth. So the product addresses the challenges of non-line of sight, near line of sight, and, and line of sight, for a common deployment with a single platform while delivering you for while delivering for high dense type applications and longer distances. Um, so in terms of the, the beam forming, so you know one of the technologies we bring to the to the table uh, with our G1 platform is is beam forming. And we don't just do you know RF beam forming, we do beam forming in the digital domain. Um, anytime we do any beam forming, our, our beam is, is roughly about 10 and a half degrees or 10.4 degrees, and we beam form the signal in the desired direction. 
And when anytime we do a beam form signal, uh, we go ahead and place north everywhere else. So even though our antenna is 90 degrees, whenever you take a snapshot at a given time when the BN is transmitting to a particular RN, the signal is being formed and is, you know, 10.4 degrees. We place nodes everywhere else. Thus, you know, no other RN would hear us and we become a good neighbor with any other vendor that's deployed in the area. And at the same time, on the receive side, if I have an interferer that is coming at me at 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever have you, I'll go ahead and place nodes on the receive end where I can go ahead and cancel that, that interferer using nodes. Um, here's the, uh, you know, in, in beam optimization. So between the RN and BN, anytime there is a, a, a transmit that occurs, um, we will go ahead and optimize that up to 5,000 times a second and we'll use the appropriate beamform that will give you the best performance. So our beamforming is not just an open loop beamform, it's more of a learned beamform technology. So there is feedback between the BN and RN where they eventually converge to a path giving you the highest performance possible. And it happens in both directions. Um, here's a, another technology that in addition to the nulling uh, that we have incorporated in, in our solution, which is uh, interference cancellation, we refer to as ABIC, asynchronous burst interference cancellation. So in addition to the nulling effect, if we happen to see an interfere uh, that is basically still gets through the nulling because it may be collinear or whatever the case, we can go ahead and cancel out the interfere in, in real time and uh, up to roughly about 40 dBs deep, uh, you know, if the interfere is there. So if you have an interfere coming at an angle with the nulling and ABIC, we can still operate and get deliver the, you know, uh, high capacity that, that we, uh, that the BN is capable of doing. And the beamform again will go ahead and adjust accordingly. So in the diagram you see here, the interferer source is coming at me at an angle. I'll go ahead and place null, and ABIC will go ahead and cancel whatever the nulling effect uh, that you know uh, missed on on that on that on that effect. So what does that allow you to do? That allows you to go ahead and deploy a Tarana solution in an environment where the interference is very noisy or congested. So it makes you feel like you got an unlicensed spectrum, but you know, you're operating almost like a license in a licensed environment. Now, obviously there are some, you know, corner cases that like, that's why you see some red spots on the right hand picture, but that doesn't mean that you don't establish a link. That means instead of getting a, you know, 800 megabit aggregate link, you probably result in a 500, 600 or 400 megabit aggregate link. It's, it's, it's not basically like other solutions where you know, instead of getting 600 megabits, because it's noisy, like on the left-hand side, uh, where you would drop to maybe 25 megabits, 10 megabits, or maybe even no link. Because we've seen scenarios where the interfere could be, you know, 40 dB, 45 dB from the noise pool. Okay, thanks, Martin. So the G1 product is our current product that we're providing here again. It's a point to multi-point solution. So the picture on the left is the residential or the remote node, and that's what's placed at the residence, home, multi-tenant unit, business office, or wherever the customer resides, and that's uh, located there. The picture in the middle is the base nodes, and one base node will provide a 90-degree sector in which 256 remote nodes can connect to that base node in that sector. Obviously, if you had four of them on the tower, you'd cover all 360 degrees. On the right-hand side is the Toronto Cloud Suite, TCS. And TCS is the online cloud solution we use to enable customers to manage all their radios, provide upgrades, see what's going on with the current status of their radios, and just basically be able to do uh, forensics, you know, troubleshooting, as well as just general monitoring and then of course uh, to add radios and augment and increase the, uh, the solution that they have deployed in the field. A couple of things to remember is that we provide the complete solution as far as radios, um, CTI, 
will provide, uh, in addition to that, all the accessories and some of the other services that go with that. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, fiber class service, as far as performance, uh, depending on what service is offered by that uh, ISP, that operator, the service provider, you, you can have 100, 200, 600 plus uh, megabit services. And then of course that can be contoured by their service offering if they decide it is you know, 50 megabits. The product ship as 50 megabits, but they can increase in speed with software changes. We provide two frequencies, currently five gigahertz and three gigahertz CDRS spectrum. Uh, so that's the basic architecture of the product. Um, here's an overview of the G1 product. Of course, on the left-hand side is the base node. Those go on the towers or the water tanks or the high, um, the high perspective uh, platform, and then the remote nodes, as you can see on the right-hand side. Um, so the key to this is that we are seeing uh, line of sight performance uh, beyond 15 kilometers today. Um, some customers are even longer than that. Uh, with non-line of sight, we're seeing up to five kilometers and beyond that in some cases for non-line of sight. And that's in areas where you see a lot of reflective uh, properties of buildings and structures and a more of a metropolitan area where we get good reflection, like Varden said, we can ricochet it off of other structures. Uh, like we talked about, up to 256 clients per sector. And uh, so that allows you more than a thousand customers for one single tower with four BNs uh, located on it. Uh, we talked a little bit about the MIMO. Uh, and remember, there's dual carriers, two 40 megahertz channels. And uh, we have uh, switching over to the right hand side, um, just the product has a capability of going up to 800 megabits. But here again, it's dependent upon the environment it's operating in and what the service offering is that the service providers are offering to their clients as well. We're seeing the same performance as far as distance in line of sight and non line of sight in order to have a connection will have, have to work well together. Um, the products are powered over uh, with PoE, power over ethernet. Um, and ABEC is, of course, applied um, on both sides of the product. Okay, um, what do you need to get started? So our recommendations is first contact uh, your CTI sales representative. I'm sure you have a contact there. Uh, that's probably how you got invited. So please get involved with them and get them, and get engaged with them. Set up your account, complete the credit check, uh, and then get assigned a sales representative if you don't have one already. And then discuss your product objectives and needs. What is really your service offering that you want to provide? Is it 50 megabits? Is it 100, 200 uh, megabits services that you want to offer to your clients? Does it need to be symmetrical or is asymmetrical okay? 100 megabit download, 50 megabit upload. So anyways, just understand and share what your offerings are and then try to understand what you need right now. Is it a trial, a proof of concept? or are you, are you ready to go into your initial deployment? Consider the fact that we have over 180 customers out there and quite a few of them have hundreds, uh, some are approaching several thousands of remote nodes fielded already that are operational. And consider going to visit some other CTI customers that are out there that are using it so you can gain real world experience, performance assessment, lessons learned, network planning recommendations, and if they were to do it over again, what would they do differently? This will reduce an enormous amount of time for you to gather all this information, um, you know, piecemeal or any other way. So we recommend doing that if possible. We don't really need to prove the technology works. It usually comes down to, will the technology work in your environment? And what kind of performance will you be able to provide to your customers? And that's really what it comes down to. And that learning with other operators, I think will, you know, help you guide you. And of course, uh, engagement with the technical staff at CTI, Justin Robinson and others, and our technical staff, such as Varden, uh, will gladly help out with network planning, providing insight as to how you want to go about doing that and what your deployment options are and things like that. 
consider also the number of towers and the coverage from those towers. Uh, you know, how you, do you want to cover it 360 or do you just need a 270 coverage or something like that? Uh, and understand those kind of things. And with that, it would help with the network planning. So we use a Google Network Planner uh, tool to do the estimations as to what kind of service that can be delivered to that address on that street to those customers. And therefore you can ban some of the service offerings in the, that region off that tower. And of course you can do it and model it for many towers. The other thing is the number of residents or businesses that you really want to connect. And that that will give us some good insight as to what you want to do. The density, is it a hybrid mix between residents and businesses? Or is it just residences and then best practices, lessons learned related to that? We'll discuss the bill of materials. Uh, CTI does have technical accreditation training um, and they're making uh, an offer for dates that are coming up pretty soon. Um, like I said, they have technical support. We have technical support that can help you. And the key thing is really understand a lot about the network planning before you get started. Okay, we'll go through the bill of materials real quick. So the first thing you want to do is decide on which frequency is best suited for your deployment. Here again, we can help with that. CTI can give guidance. But the column in the middle that says trial quantities is 1BN and 3RNs. And that's what you need to validate maximum performance of that 1BN at 2.4 gig gigabits uh, because each of the RNs can do up to 800. If you have a small deployment, what we recommend is a full tower configuration and about 100 RNs dispersed across all four sectors. And that would be basically, you know, 25 residents or office buildings or whatever you want to connect in that. Or you could load it up and do it asymmetrically if you want, 75 in one sector, just to, you know, see how it performs. Okay, so the top is the three gigabit, the three, three gigahertz uh, frequency CBRS, and the lower one is the 5.8 gigahertz uh, offering. So base nodes, residential nodes, RNs, BNs, okay? And pick one of the two. Uh, the next thing is this is the, all the accessories that you need. So we won't go through all the details, but here again, CTI has all the accessories ready to go, and uh, they know how to configure this. You just have to give them some more guidance as to how you want to configure it on the tower and what lengths you need for some of the cables. So on the lower part of it, pick one of the part numbers below. So my recommendation is for uh, a trial quantities, just pick one of those. If you're going to do a small deployment, you want to maybe change it up a little bit depending on tower configuration or just um, Maybe there's future needs that you need a longer cable or whatever it is. But anyway, select one of those down below in the quantities uh, that you need for the, uh, the base nodes, the VNs. Now, the select the software management support, the SMS licenses. So all of the remote nodes need the software management support license. And what that covers is all the upgrades, software upgrades to the radios, access to TCS and the use of TCS to manage all those radios, 24 by seven support that you get, and uh, also access to all the uh, technical documentation and everything you need as uh, things evolve and change with the product. There's a one year, three year, and five year offering on the SMS. So here again, you need one of these for every RN you field. Okay, the next is the port speed upgrades. Now the port speed upgrades, just like SMS, is only related to the RNs. So you would apply this to RNs. They ship as 50 megabits per second performance, and you can upgrade them to 100 or to 200 or to 600 megabits. And you can apply a one year subscription, three year, um, or uh, um, the perpetual um, license on those. So um, do you need these for every radio? Only the radios that you're going to provide a service offering that's above 50 megabits. So here again, the ship is 50. You can test them out at a higher level for the first 30 days uh, and see if you get better performance, of course. Um, but if you want to just leave them at 50, then that's fine. Anything else, then you'll need to have an upgrade license uh, subscription, I should say, on that RN. Okay, so just to wrap things up, 
the ability of providing you know, noise cancellation and really good connections with ABIC and also beam forming allows you to reduce the number of towers that you need uh, in the base nodes to be able to provide access to all those remote nodes, all those access points. So that's the first thing is fewer base nodes on the tower, less cost, less licensing fees, rental fees and all that, and all the structural things that you need with that to support fewer radios, reduction of cost. The other part of it was the increased number of clients that you can connect per sector, like 256 per sector, like we talked about, the full towers over a thousand subscribers in that, that region that off that tower. And the good thing is, you can address customers that you can't with any other technology off the same base nodes. So there's non-line of sites and there's near line of sight uh, customers that are just hard to get. And there's no way they're going to get fiber in the short term. So a differentiated performance package that you can offer for higher monthly fees is another key part of it. And you're future-proofing your customers as well. So as they increase their bandwidth and requirements in their homes and their businesses, you can, with software, just increase the performance of those remote nodes. So that's a, a good thing. Now, if your business is partially fiber and you're deploying wireless as well, just think about you can deploy this quickly and immediately gain revenue while you're waiting to deploy your other technologies in those customer areas. So that's a good benefit. Since we're very spectrum efficient, uh, you can the reuse of the frequency is, is one, which maximizes your use of the frequency. And like we said, we can have multiple Toronto uh, radios operating in close proximity off of different towers, the BNs, and still function without affecting each other, okay? And just to wrap it up is, um, I think what you'll find is we can provide fiber class solutions for homes, low latency, long range, symmetrical services if they require it, high capacity for neighborhoods for you know economically scaling it where you have a lot of dense customers and you can uh, benefit from uh, deploying a lot of customers in you know very small area or in some of the rural areas where you have longer distances and it's still viable. Uh, consistent quality of service uh, throughout those connected customers, and you can support those higher level subscription plans. Um, high quality of service uh, in an unlicensed spectrum is really hard to do, and we figured out how to do it. So you avoid the high cost of licensed spectrum uh, by using you know, 5.8 and then the lightly license of uh, 3 gigahertz as well. And the installation for the home side, the resident side, the RN side is very, very simple. And it's, it's ideal for um, operators and um, uh, service providers that can um, you know, deploy the trucks and the technicians to easily do it for customers a little more sophisticated. Um, there are some customers that are looking at and supporting customer self-installation as well. Okay, thanks, Mike. That ends the presentation. So we're ready for some questions. Okay, thanks, guys. All right, let's take a look here. So we have a number of questions. Uh, the first one is: Is there an optimal BN mounting height? Is there an optimal? What was that? Optimal BN mounting height. Um, so this, it's not a matter of optimum or not. So as um, as Kyle mentioned, we use Google Network Planner. So, you know, we always like, you know, tower type deployments or, or tall buildings. Um, obviously, in, in the wireless world, the higher you are, the better it is. But we always will, you know, run a uh, RF analysis using Google Network Planner based on the height. So that is provided and height on the RN side as well. So height's important on both sides of the link. Um, obviously, you, know, you don't want to be too close to the ground but you want to be high enough where you can actually uh, ricochet off buildings, get multi-path and go over some trees or even some blue trees. Okay, great. Um, is the G1 platform designed for mesh or fixed point to multi-point? 
No. Uh, so the G1 platform is a fixed wireless access point to multi point solution with a SFP plus 10 gig backhaul Ethernet interface. So it, we do not do mess. Okay. Uh, well, kind of a follow up on that one. Is the BN connection fiber only, no Ethernet? So fiber only. Yep, good question. So uh, we do have three data ports on the BN for backhaul. We have data port one and two, which are 10 gigabit SFP plus interfaces. We also have data port three, which is a gigabit ethernet uh, electrical interface um, using CAT5 or CAT6. But please do note, as, as Kyle had in his slides, our BN is capable of doing 2.4 gigabits per second. So if you actually do use the gigabit ethernet interface, you are limiting the backhaul to the VM. So we strongly suggest or recommend you use the SFP plus uh, data ports. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any plans to deploy equipment in six gigahertz? Uh, yes. So, you know, we do have plans to support the six gigahertz frequency. And, you know, the solution is part of our roadmap. So, yes. And but when, when the AFC is ready and available, I believe we will have product available at that time as well. So it will be based on the G1 platform, supporting the six gigahertz spectrum. Okay. Um, it says this supports two by 40 megahertz channels. We have some locations where we can't use five gigahertz. Do you have any other options? So uh, the option is, uh, to use Tarana, right? So one of the some of the benefits we mentioned was, you know, RF nulling, a big frequency use of one. So one of our the advantages of using Tarana is not to mitigate interference, is to actually cancel out interference. So we built the product specifically to operate in an in in a congested environment because we can. And just to give you an example, I mean, I do have. You know, customers or a particular example is a customer in, in, in Tucson where they were, you know, going from, from downtown Tucson up a, you know, financial building and going, you know, 10, 10 miles out. And, and you can imagine how much interference of under five gigahertz due to Wi Fi would be available there in addition to other operators. And that customer was still able to achieve 375 megabits down and I think about 70 megabits up based on the network profile chosen. So keep in mind that the Tirana solution is designed and intended to operate in congested environments. Um, so, so it's not like your typical traditional product where we'll mitigate interference by jumping channels, narrowing the, you know, the channel width and all that, so on and so forth. In addition, the two by 40 need not be contiguous, right? So you can place a 40 megahertz in unit I1 and for example, another 40 megahertz in unit I2. Thank you. Um, has your technology been accepted by various state and federal grant programs as a suitable solution for the long term in relation to the preference for fiber deployments? Uh, yes. So for some of the RDOF and the CAF money, uh, it has been um, approved, especially where it requires some of the licensed products that uh, the three gigahertz um, it falls into that category and has been accepted by the federal government. Um, there's quite a few of our uh, service providers that are uh, doing RDOF deployments and others that are doing CAF. And then there's some uh, Tribal Connect one federal funding that's also been um, supported in deploying uh, Tirana. So um, the rules are very careful uh, or different, excuse me, for bead money. And a lot of the bead money, um, I think it's going to, the final version, I believe, is more oriented to um, three gigs, CDRS, um, PAL license. Uh, and I, I don't know about GAA, Mike, I'm not sure about that, but that's a different category, of course. But yes, there is federal money that is covering deployments of service operators um, that are deploying Toronto. Uh, there's mentions of 800 meg download and 150 meg upload. Is that possible to reach on a single RN connection? Or is that no. overall with multi-user MIMO or similar? No, so, so our solution is distributed massive MIMO with multi-user MIMO in both downlink and uplink. 
Uh, the BN is capable of doing 2.4 gigabits per second using six spatial frames. The RN is capable of doing 800 megabit aggregate and downlink uplink will depend on your network profile. Each RN is capable of supporting up to two spatial streams. So if you were ever wanted to consume the entire capacity of a BN, you would need three RNs at full capacity, uh, taking down 800 megabits aggregate, which was also the 2.4 gigabits. Again, multi-user MIMO in both directions with spatial streams and max capacity per RN is 800 megabits aggregate and 2.4 gigabits on the BN. Thank you. Um, we'll take uh, just a couple more here. Uh, <clears throat> is this spread spectrum? Is it available in five gigahertz ISM band? I've heard of Celco's deploying Tirana at tower sites and causing a heap of interference throughout the band. So one thing we don't do is cause interference in other solutions. Uh, we are referred to as a friendly neighbor or a good neighbor. Um, remember, a lot of the technologies we talked about, even when we transmit, we do nulling not only on the receive for interference cancellation. Our beam widths are very narrow. They're 10.4 degrees. So uh, we don't, we only use the beam and the spectrum required to achieve, you know, the capacities and deployments that, that we talk about. So if anything, you know, we will, we wouldn't be affected by interfere out there because of all our technology. In addition, we are a good neighbor and use only what's needed to achieve what is required. Um, now, hence why one of the reasons why you can do frequency reuse of one. So at any given tower, you can use the same spectrum on all four sectors at full capacity without taking a hit on performance. The only area is obviously the cell edge and the cell edge would get hit. Worst case scenario is 4%. So if you were expecting 500 megabits, it would be 480, so it wouldn't even be noticeable. It's not, some some other vendors may say frequency reuse of one, but that's not a full order, full order modulation like we say, right? They may have, they may drop from 260, 256 QAM down to 16 QAM or QPSK. Thus, they do take a hit. Two more here. Uh, is there a home Wi-Fi solution on the roadmap? Good question. Um, our focus currently is on fixed wireless access. I can't speak on behalf of the company, you know, if we're going to have something in a year or two or three from now, but the current focus I know on the immediate roadmap is the fixed wireless access solution point to multipoint. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, does poor signal of a uh, does poor signal of a single RN affect other RNs on the same BN? So um, we we have six spatial streams. Each spatial stream consists of uh, you know uh, time, frequency, and space. So the separation between RNs, the frequencies or subcarriers used by RN, and further limit and further divided into you know uh, time slots and the grouping of certain carriers and time slots and space and the spatial planes we refer to as a transport block so anytime we send a message to a given rn we send it via this transport block so if there is an rn that is further out only that transport block is what gets affected not all transport blocks on that particular stream and not any other of the six streams so Having said that, you know, do you need more transport blocks to send a given data to an RN? Uh, yes, you do, but only those transport blocks will have a lower order modulation where all other RNs or other spatial streams will operate at whatever modulation that the link allows. Okay, all right. And then we'll end it on, uh, are, are there any networks that have 200 plus RNs on a single BN? So our current support is 256 RNs per BN. Um, I haven't seen that yet myself, but I have. I, we do have a customer that I know that has, I believe, over 130 RNs on a 5 gigahertz BN. Um, they have all the conditions, line of sight, long line of sight, near line of sight, and they are delivering or they are selling packages as high as 100 megabits per second uh, down and 20 up. 
So we do know that there's a customer greater than 130, I think it's about 130, 435 RNs delivering 100 meg packages to them. Perfect. And, and based on the traffic usage, I just wanna make that clear, based on, their, on what they see in terms of oversubscription and traffic usage on their current RNs, they believe they can continue to deploy RNs well beyond 200. Awesome, amazing radio. Um, all right, uh, and then one more just came in. Do you have any public forum or group established for ongoing community discussion? I don't believe Toronto has its own. I know there's some unofficial ones, but I, I don't believe Toronto has its own uh, community. Okay, perhaps uh, CTI will start a forum for... Uh, for Toronto then. Sure. All right, uh, Kyle and Varden, thank you so much for, for educating us on your products. We we look forward to the the next few Wireside chats in the series here. Um, you know, while we get in the deep dive, certainly in Vegas when, when we have the all day program. Um, and, and thank you everyone for attending today. If you have any further questions about Toronto's G1 platform or have any wireless needs, please contact your CTI sales rep and uh, or visit us at cticonnect.com. Thank you all, have a good day. Thanks, Brent. Thank you, everyone.